synthesis. Where you at, shorty? Synthesis. Yeah. Just wanna holla at you for a second. You know what I mean? Talk to you. We talk to you. Check it. Saw this little shorty on what? Talk about it, Wicatika. We are here live and direct. Look at who I got here. I got Ash. He's here, guys. He's I and I am him. He, he is also known as the unofficial mayor on Instagram, which I thought is really lit. I like that name. My friend gave me that name at the very first job I ever had. Yeah? Because people would come to my job, not to shop, but just to say hi. <laughs> and she was like, you got to be the unofficial mayor. You're just the mayor. And I just stuck with it. And that's it. Yeah. And it stuck with you, and I love it. I like what you got going on. So I brought him here today because... You know, I do interview artists, I do interview different types of people, but we came across each other at Sin Santana's um, song release party. That come, come, thing, come, come. Yo, that was hot. Yeah. That was really hot. I love the, did you do one of the money things? Nah, my friend took the money thing. Yeah. I just, you know, everybody's I mean, been doing that yeah. 360, you know, the, the, the dope view or whatever, but she had the money gun too, so it was like making it rain, and yeah. I, I just thought that that was super lit. I had a great time. She had a beautiful setup. But we did come across each other there, and I'm like, I gotta bring him on my show because I see he does a lot of the same things I do, but you also do fashion. Yes. I'm getting my little hats. I'll be posting that up later on my gram, Gatika the DJ. If you didn't know, now you know. You better follow. You better hit that Get follow familiar. button. Um, but we're here, live and direct. Thank you so much for coming by. Hey, this is Studio man. Square Recordings. We're going to be streaming on latinomix.com. You already know. We're here, Latin vibes as well. We, we mix in. We, we multiracial around here. But I brought you on my show, Talk About It, because I wanted to talk about it with you. Let's talk about it. Yes, we shall talk about what, it. So what you got going on? I know you do fashion, but you're also like in the scene, in the industry. So tell me a little bit about yourself. So, I kind of broke in the industry um, with my friend, because he's knee-deep in the industry. He's, he's a whole artist and stuff. I used to do music, but I realized fairly quickly that the music I make isn't marketable. Okay. Not nobody wants to hear depression for like an hour. So, well, some people do, but okay. All yeah, right. it's more like, and plus, like, when I'm at a party, I wouldn't want to hear myself. That's true. That's 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 like the cortavenas, like, when you're, like, yeah. on the way home, when, you know, the music has been yeah. loud, and now you want to kind of, like, wind down a little bit. Yeah, it's like my music is not that vibe, so I kind of, like, took a step back and was like, what else can I do in the industry that still, like, kind of pertains to music? Because mm -hmm. music is, like, my passion. So then I got into radio. And people say I have a radio voice. So you I was do. Like, oh, you do. This can work. Yes. I can, um, you know, give it insight by me going to these events, or me networking, or me meeting these people, and kind of give a peek behind the curtain to like the listener. Yes. Who usually just watches it on TV, or just goes as a fan. They don't really know the inner workings of the of the business. Can you, can you discuss it, how much fun that is? That's so much it's, fun, guys. It's, it's so it's, much fun. <laughs> it's not fun at all, actually. Yeah, no, that, that was my sarcastic, <laughs> like, it's really not, but... It looks we, fun. We were saying, like, you have to have a passion for it. Like, it's not something that you do for the money. No shade, everybody. I love my sponsors. Um, yeah. But it's definitely, like, radio and just, like, that platform. I think you just have to have a love for people and like the understanding of communications. Um, I don't know if you feel that way. I do, because clearly um, the checks aren't like, you know, sustaining uh, the living that I want, but it's definitely a passion project with me. Like I feel like, like one of my monikers is the voice of the voiceless, because yep. I feel that I'm, a, I'm not afraid to say the things that people are thinking, mm -hmm. but they don't have the voice of like, you know, or platform and mm -hmm. I've been blessed to like, you know work like a little niche corner for myself and it's slowly growing people are like you know what you do have something going on here you do make a lot of sense I do see it your way or I didn't think of it this way like one of the things even when I was in college one of my English professors taught me that you should always finish what you're asking or what you're writing with a question mm -hmm. you have to challenge the person who's reading you have to challenge the person who's listening because if you're just regurgitating information, 
like people kind of take it as gospel. People like, oh, you're just copy and paste it. Yeah. But if you're challenging oversaturated content, so yeah. it's definitely great. Yeah, to ask people questions and to kind of get those gears going, like, like what you know, what are you, what is he talking about? Like that's good. It's always because you know you have to like see, you have to give people the opportunity to like think for themselves, because mm -hmm. people are like sheep. But you know, you you just like put something there, like, and if it has a big enough following, people are like, oh yeah, I'm hyped for this. Oh yeah, this is like the gospel, and it's like nah, like you have to learn how to like. Definitely like controversy, stir the pot a little bit. Oh yeah, absolutely. But there's a fine line I think between being controversial, stirring the pot, and then just clout chasing. So like I try to have that balance. It's like what is that? That clickbait to like get yeah. people there, but then once you're there, be like okay, but. You know the educational subuk. You know what I mean, like yeah. kind of because people for some reason like we just when people get educational, people just like tap like they tap out, they check out. I feel like they don't yeah, want to get people, educated. People want. Can you curse on here? Yeah, we could leave it out after. People want fuckery. Yeah. Like, Why are we like this? Why are we like, like people this? People want ratchet. Yeah. Like, people want like microwavable, like instant gratification. Yeah, I did a little like marketing um, course online because you know you gotta it, radio. It's not just showing up and talking. Like we were talking about it before. There's marketing. There's the interview scheduling. There's the budget. Like there's so many things. But marketing, I think, is a really big part of it, and get, and getting the people to at least show up. And 1, it's like if you don't have marketing, you don't have anything. Yeah. Like you and can have the greatest the consumer, thing in the world. Like we just were the consumer. Like think about the way you are on Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? You're just like scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. So endlessly scrolling. You just have to like captivate attention. It's just so yeah. much. It's so much. And then it's all about. It's all also about like what like your interests are. Like for example, like everyone's Instagram is kind of like like tailor made for like what their interests are. So like for me, example, my a lot of my stuff, I'll get music. Like events, um, I'll get fashion, I'll get sneakers, I'll get things like that. And then someone else could be like, oh, I'm into um, sports or I'm into like, you know, hiking. Mm -hmm. Like it's all tailor made. And then they just take that information and they just regurgitate you with that with ads and stuff. So if you, you have to do it in a way that you have the greatest product in the world. And if you don't market it the right way, no one's going to know about it. You got to know what your target audience is. And then you gotta know how they, how they like to watch things. Me, I don't know. Like I feel like my targeted audience, I would say, is probably like twenty five to thirty five, and people who are into music, like what you said, like music. Mm -hmm. Not so much fashion. I'm I'm a mom, so like I'm kind of out of the fashion world. I kind of need help with that. So maybe you can help me yeah, with that. 1, I need I need some fashion tips because I'm super like I need a fanny pack. <laughs> like now, fanny packs are in. You just they have to are. Wear, you have to wear it correctly. Yeah. So yeah. okay, I'm a I can't wear it like this. You can. I can't. Yeah. But I know like guys, they wear it. Yeah, in I wear front of them. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. I can't. Nah. Yeah, no, the guys aren't doing that. <laughs> but do girls do the, the whole thing? That uh, it's more of a guy thing, right? It's more of a guy thing, but I do see girls doing it as well. Okay, so, all right. Well, fanny packs good. are cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> out of the things that you do, I know you do fashion, radio, podcasting. What was the last one? I think you had said. Oh, uh, you're managing. Yes, I um. So in the pan in the pandemic, yeah, the money came in. I took all that money and I bought a machine. Okay. So now, like, as opposed to me working out of different fashion houses, I kind of am starting my own. Like, I've been blessed over the years. I've been stitching since 2007. And, like, I've worked with, like, the Super Bowl, Mark Jacobs, ASAP Ferg, um, the Olympics. So I've been um, done Fashion Week, Met Gala. So I've been in all facets of, like, you know, like, wherever there needs, like, some sort of, like, embroidery or just fashion as a whole, I've been able to, like, tap into each, like, stuff, but it's all through under, under different fashion houses. So mm -hmm. it's like, I personally don't get a, get the credit. It's like, oh, this fashion house did this, yeah. and then I'm just a regular person. But yeah. now, I got my, my machine, got a little small little setup, and hopefully I can grow from there. Well, you know, you take those as lessons and now, you know, now this is going to be your empire and you're going to, like, the fact that you could spit off that you've done Marc Jacobs, Olympics, you know, ASAP Ferg, like, that's going to give you so much more validity now that you're doing it alone. Yeah. And now that bag is going to be even bigger. Bigger bags that's, are on the way. That's the goal. 
bigger bags are on the way. So tell me a little bit more about this radio as well. I know you were saying that right now you have a show? Right now the show is on hiatus. Mm -hmm. um, kind of everybody just needed a break. Yeah. I personally didn't, but you know everyone needed a break. Um, I'm in talks with the program um, with the radio um, director mm -hmm. and the owner. They're trying to bring me back in October, okay. but everything is like pending. We haven't put any pen to sheets yet, so. So Hopefully. tell me about what the show or what uh, like who is the targeted audience or who is it that you're speaking to with Ironically your show? Ironically enough, the name of the show we used to be called Let's Talk About It. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah. God! So maybe we should do a little you know collaboration over we here. Should. We should talk about it and we should let's talk about it with people. Yeah, I'm I'm totally down for that. So um, I having had the most background of actual radio from the crew because I was brought on late. They had a show on their own. And they needed like a third, like Mike, and they did auditions, and like the fans, what they wanted me, because I'm like very controversial. Mm -hmm. They kind of put me under like Charlemagne, mm -hmm. Star. I'm like from that like cloth, so I would bring like you know actual news mm -hmm. that is really being talked about. But then like the other two uh, um, co's would focus more on like situational relationship stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I would come in with the controversy, yeah, and all that fire. The but fire. they, but they would like it's like they would be upset, but then like at the same time they would laugh because it's yeah. like, like they just couldn't help but laugh. Yeah. But it, it made it was a good show. We had a nice little run, but it's sad. I'm sad it kind of ended. But you know, hopefully one door closes, another, another one opens. Exactly, and you know <laughs> what I'm saying this show is called Talk About It, so we could do some stuff over here. We could. We could talk about some controversial things as well. I'm definitely down. <laughs> um, where, like, what made you decide that you wanted to do this? Like, when did these passions start for you? Um, well, the music thing has been forever. And then, like I said, that stopped. And I was good. I was really about just hanging everything up and just say, you know what? Maybe the industry is not for me. And... I think things started to take a turn once my friend started his clothing line. When I ran his first hat, and it was supposed to just be a one-off, it kind of turned into like this whole clothing line for him. Because mm -hmm. I, was, I was always doing my clothing line as well. And once I started seeing like a lot of celebrities wearing this stuff, it kind of started by default having me be in these rooms. And it kind of just happened organically. And that's the part I like the most about it is like I didn't have to force my way in and I didn't, I'm not a plant. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm really been doing this for a while and like the fruits of my labor are starting to like, you know, show. Blessings, blessings. Yeah. I'm happy for that. I know the industry, it's it's a hard world out here. It's a, it's a monster. It is. It is. It's very, um, what's the word for it? Unforgiving. Unforgiving. <laughs> um... But it's it's funny though because like like for instance me I'm a little bit newer to the game like I started in radio years ago and then I took a break to be a mom and now that I'm coming back you know people are like oh I see you I see you I see you and I'm like you see me but I'm tired and like a lot of the stuff it started from you know like you said the fruits of your labor like I'm a, I'm assuming that means that you did some stuff for free or like, oh, you know what 100%. I mean? Like, like it's not like people see me now and they're like, oh my God, I'm so proud of you. Like, but you, they really don't know like all the sleepless nights, all the times of doing stuff for free and all the things that like the behind the scenes stuff. And and it's definitely not something that's cut for everyone. You have to have very thick skin. 1000%. Like, this is not something you can just like yeah, snap of a finger. Yeah, absolutely not. Um, but you know, we're out here, we're doing it and... We about that life, so we ain't going nowhere, right? Absolutely We're not going not. nowhere. We're just getting started. Just getting started. Um, what kind of, I'm sorry, what kind of music is it that you said that you were created? I made, like, in a sense, you could say depressing music, so if I were to compare myself, and not lyrically, because I feel like he's way better than I am, like, it would be like in a Joe Budden lane. Okay. Yeah. Like, nobody wants to hear that for, like, an hour. You know what I mean? I mean, you'd be surprised. There is targeted, there, like it people, is, but people do want to hear that though. Just like, but then what happens? Maybe just not mainstream. That's all. 
But I definitely don't see myself as a mainstream act when it comes to music. Because mm -hmm. the I'm more of a, like the lyrical miracle stuff. I mm -hmm. like to really put words together and stuff. But for radio and just like media as a whole, I can see myself going all the way like mainstream. Because I just feel the same way with you. Like I feel like we have a lot to offer. Yeah. But with music, it's... I feel like an uh, overall goal with me is like if I were to do like let's say a BET cipher one day, mm -hmm. like if I actually start writing and taking it more serious, that to me would be like my version of like the Grammys. Gotcha. Because I don't see like that type of music. Yeah. Plus, then I would have to stop doing radio because I have to like really lock in. Yeah, you have to commit to it because yeah, that's something like, that you have to like full throttle. Like, you can't half-ass that. No. Yeah. No, I say all the time, like, there's no semicolons because I don't have that shit. Yes. I can't. Yes, I like that. <laughs> I'm taking that. Yeah. You have to take that? Absolutely. <laughs> it's one of my bars that I never nice. put out. <laughs> nice. Well, that's but, really dope. Yeah, I mean, it, like I said, it, it's a passion. It'll be, like I said, if I were to ever put out music, it's strictly for fun. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm the next Drake. No, nah, but anything. you know that those are usually the biggest artists. Those are the people who make it the biggest because, like, I don't know how into the Latino world you are in, um, but, like, Jay Cortez, I don't know if you know him. He's a really big artist right now. Mm -hmm. He started as a producer, and he would make all these beats for all these artists, and they'd be like, yo, bro, you have a good voice. Like, you should just do this yourself. He's like, nah, I don't want it. I don't want it. And now he's, like, one of the top three in the Latino world because everyone, he just started to listen to everybody. Like, yo. Why am I doing this for other people? Let me just do it for myself. There are people who want to listen to that type of music, Ash. I'm telling you. I'm going to be the one to be in the studio like, do it, do it. And then when he has his first hit, he could be like, DJ Gatica, I put you on, okay? 1,000%. I'm, I'm, I'm really big on giving credit to like... Same. Because that's another thing in the industry too. Mm -hmm. People do not like to give credit. Mm -mm. People like to just take shit, act like it's theirs, mm -hmm. and run away with it. Mm -hmm. And that has put a sour taste in my mouth like in all facets it, it could be fashion it could be music it could be radio i definitely had those experiences as well but i always like to look at the positives right because i'm very emotional so if i was to get if i was to act upon all my emotions oh my god this it wouldn't be good but the way i look at it is i take it as like flattery that it's like you had to copy me to do that mm -hmm. and now now you've cut off that connection, so you're yeah. never going to get anything like that again in your life. And I could still make that and know, like, that's how lit I am, that you had to, like, take that from me. You know what I mean? I remember one time I went to a, it was like a, I don't want to say it was a pop-up shop, because there was, like, a bunch of stuff going on that day. And my friend was ironically performing that day. And he wanted me to introduce, he wanted to introduce me to, like, one of his people who also had the same name of the clothing line I had. I'm like, I'm not pressed because my stuff's copywritten. I have all my stuff. You had your ducks in a row. Yeah. Uh, that's one thing I always make sure is to have all my uh, paperwork straight. If that's one thing I could give like any person that's listening, is to have your paperwork straight. Get that yeah. LLC. Get that trademark. Yes. Yes. If not, it's, it's a wrap. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just take it. So I'm at this event, and this guy, he... um. He's showing me his hats, and personally, I didn't really care much for the hats, but I'm not one to really shit on someone like that either. It's like, okay, you know, that's what's up, man. Like, keep at it. He's like, yeah, man, you got to look at this design I have. So he shows me a design of a design I already made. Because no. it was a flip of a logo, nice. but I never put it out. And mine is, is dated because I date all my work. And, he, and by then, It's like how you, how you see musicians, like, always record, but they never put stuff out. Mm -hmm. I'm the same way with my, with my designs. Like... I have maybe like terabytes of designs and I just never put it out because I feel like, okay, this one I feel is the one. So he's arguing with me like, well, I'm going to put this design out and I had it first and I'm like, this Whatever. is cool. Like, he doesn't even, like, yeah. the company doesn't even exist anymore, what he had. Because he, he wanted to just get something quick. Like, and that's, my instant gratification. That's what happens. People don't know what comes quickly can leave easily oh 1000 so put that work in and definitely get your paper papers in order because absolutely you have to if that it's definitely true industry is very very cutthroat and i know i also feel the same way like 
we create, we create, we create, and we're so hard on ourselves. And we're like, oh, well, it's not perfect. I'm not, I'm not releasing it. But yet, like, look at that. It's someone already tried to, you know, like, because yeah. it was probably so great. They were like, yo, this shit is hot. Like, I'm just going to take it. And I think that as a creator, like, if anyone's listening to this, we shouldn't be so hard on ourselves and just really, like, just drop it. People, there are going to be people who love it and there are going to be people who hate it. Who cares about people who hate That's it? That's a fact. Just maximize on the people who love it. Like. That's definitely a fact. I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's, I have, like, that Dr. Dre syndrome. Like, you know, we just never put out that album he put something else out but he he didn't give us detox mm. and that's what i feel like with a lot of my designs it's like this is cool but this ain't like it's not it it's not it's not like like luckily now i have a few that i'm actually going to commit to they're actually in production now um once i we're pushing for like a halloween release mm. that's the goal but you know car subject to change i don't like to put things in stone and then yeah. like they don't it doesn't even meet my expectations but that is like the tentative date of like when I'm going to relaunch everything alright well I'll be following up with you to see how that's doing I myself I'm trying to get into some merchandise as well I got my logo going on so maybe we can we can talk about some fashion stuff with me that we could collaborate on we could talk about it oh okay um so sorry we're going to have to cut and I'm going to cut that out. This wasn't even on. None of it? No, that's on. Okay. But that wasn't on? None but this it? was the recording. This is not on. Oh, no. I mean, we'll still have the audio from this. But I just like to be extra. Murr! This died. Oh. Okay, well. We could come back. And only record the other part. Okay. I've never used that before. Yeah, this is this is going on now. Okay, so <laughs> that's fun. Um, a fun part of my show that I wanted to start incorporating is mm -hmm. what's called the Kitty Karaoke Challenge. How do you feel about karaoke? I love karaoke, but I cannot sing for shit. Great! Even better! <laughs> that's what we're here for, for people who can't sing. But no, I know that I put you on the spot. I'm not going to make you do this. But maybe our next, you know, hangout or session, we can get some karaoke vibes going. How do Definitely. you feel about that? Okay, great. And um, I'll actually try to learn a song, because that's another reason why I don't do music, is because I don't even remember all, any of my lyrics. Really? I'll rap it, uh -huh. but like... If I need to perform it, because th there's a thing for thing too with like people that perform, mm -hmm. like you cannot have like your actual song mm -hmm. be your performance track. Right. No. But there's a lot of people that do that. Yeah. And I feel like the it's a crutch because they don't know their lyrics. So yeah. There's they, so much behind being an artist. There's, yeah. There's and I'm so like, much. I'm like, that's a lot of work. Like I can barely remember like if I had breakfast this morning. You think I'm gonna remember songs from like. 2012 so you know what a little trick is because normally what people do when they hear a song and they like it they always try to sing over the words and they're like yeah, no, yeah. it's like no that's a trick you have to just listen to the song over and over again without singing the lyrics because the way your brain like absorbs the information you actually like understand it better and because you're replaying it you'll remember it so there you go that's a little tip if you're trying to hear music and and do that. I'm gonna do that. So when I come here next time, and you put me on the spot, we're gonna be doing kitty karaoke. Like, hmm. I know earlier. So earlier, I did a post with the Bruno Mars because I don't know that song. I he killed that song, but I was in the car doing my own little kitty karaoke, and I was like, hmm. so you know. Yeah, but you got a voice on you, so that's different. So <laughs> I have a voice. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Um, I have a voice, but I'm very scared to use it. It's weird. Like I'm. I could be the best backup singer. Like, like mm -hmm. if you're the artist, you get all the, the, the main, the lights, and I'll just be in the back, like your hype woman, like, I'm gonna need the, the, so, I said it here first, you need a backup artist, I'm here. Okay? That's how I feel like <laughs> with everything else. Like, I don't like to be the... The main focal main. Focal point. I like to, I like to have either things or people mm -hmm. be the front and center. Yes. And I'm just... Exactly. Plugging everything in and making it work. That's why DJing really was just perfect for me. Because it's like, I'm there, I'm on stage, I'm dealing with the music, but yeah. I'm just not singing the music. But that's also a, um, 
a thing too because a lot of DJs are not good. Yeah, no. Like I'll go. To, we go to a lot of events, yeah. and some of these DJs, their are transitions whack. are horrible. No, no. Yeah, like, no. Yeah, I. Hate I that. So okay, I started in radio, so all my friends, all my friends were DJs, men mm-hmm. DJs. So when I came out and I was like, yo. Fuck what you heard, like, I'm a fucking DJ now, you know? They was all like, whatever, cat, move over, like, please, like... And I'm like, no, like, I come from a music family. Like, I was in my high school for the band program. Like, I am about that music life, so I took it real serious. I was as well. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, you know, blending, transitioning. I literally never touched the effects button because I've heard all my boys talk about DJs. Like, oh, dudes just press a couple effects buttons and they think that they're DJs, not knowing everything else. And, like, I took it really seriously so that when I do get booked, like, people know it's not because I'm a girl, it's not because I know people, it's because because I have talent and like I take this really seriously. So I'm a lot. Lately, I've seen a lot more female DJs, and they're, a lot of them are really good. Yeah, and it's not just saying because they're female, but right. it's nice to see. Because the guys are really hard on us. Like the industry is a lot more hard on us because you know there's the girls who get booked because they look like strippers. Yes. No shade to the women who are doing it. I get it. You got. If I had the body, I would probably do it too. But I don't have the body, so here we are learning how to do it with talent instead of you know body images. Yeah, um, that, that's gonna fade. Yeah. The talent you. You can't. You can't replace talent. It's the personality and the talent. Okay, that's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> But I'm going to be DJing on Friday. Maybe you can come by. Absolutely. I'll be in Times Square. Oh, yeah, that's right You guys right already know. I'll be in Times Square. You guys can come by. Send me the details. I'm definitely there. All right. Well, tease us a little bit more. So what do you have coming up that we need to stay in tune with you for? Um, hopefully, I, um, I'm back on the air in October. Um, fashion project dropping Halloween. Um, I might come out of retirement with music. Because uh, I have a family member and my friend, they're working on projects and they said they want me on it. So, And I, I want to be that push too. I want to be that inspiration. Get that music out. Get that music out. So I don't out. know if I'm doing a skit or if I'm going to actually like do some lyrics, but we'll see. I mean, I'll show one of the hats here yes, as well. Let's show. I brought the I Come Bearing Gifts. This Yay. is for you. Yay, for me. Ooh, culture. Yes. Para la cultura, o yo? Do you like that? Do you like that? Do you have a website? We are working on that. Hopefully, the launch is Halloween. How do people get your products? Um, my Instagram for this is Culture Caps. Um, C U L T U R E C A P S. And if not, you could just follow me, and I have the little link tree, gotcha. and you'll find it gotcha. there as well. Awesome sauce. Well, thank you so much for stopping by today. Thank you for having me. If there's one message that you can tell my audience, for all those people, all my creators, I have a lot of upcoming artists that follow me, a lot of people who are kind of still with their real job, but, you know, want to follow their passions. Do you have a message for them? Get your paperwork straight. (laughs) Copyright everything. LLC everything. Is there a difference between a copyright and a patent? Yes. The... Patent is more, from my understanding, patent is more of like if you create something like, let's say you create this hat Mm -hmm. from scratch and let's say this spins, Mm -hmm. that would be your patent to that because you own the rights to this. The idea of putting that on there. Copyright is more of like like a song or like, you know, a design, okay, stuff like that. That's my understanding from okay. it. I could be wrong, no. but we'll do some. We'll do some fact checks. Tank. We'll do some fact checks. We, 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 we just like to get, get the brain moving. You know, get yeah, people thinking about what they're important. doing, what they're doing. Stimulation is important. Well, again, thank you so much, all my audience, for tuning in. I'm here every Saturday, 8 p.m. LatinoMix.com, and I'll see you next week. Peace out. This needs a new battery. White plains and gun hill. I was like slim thick. I ain't gon' hold you. You look moldable. Certain your body look good folded, boo. Let mama laugh. She said her body comes from soul food. Indeed, intrigued by my king ways and such. My words perfected like some wizardry. Hit the Dutch in my mind, hoping, praying that I could touch. Gave up my math and added 